Joining us now, man who's in the stadium, we are looking back on yesterday's match between Serbia and England with Carling. It is Stan Collymore. Good afternoon, Stan. Gentlemen, very uh, good afternoon from Aachen. Uh, about 45 minutes uh, southwest of Cologne, right on the Dutch-Belgian border. And uh, tonight I should be watching Belgium in Belgium. And then in a few days' time, the next Dutch game, watching Holland in Holland, other than following the three Lions. So I thought a bit of pan-Euro um, <laughs> experience of watching the games as well as being in the stadium. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so, I, I was looking at some of your tweets as the game was unfolding yesterday, Stan. You were in the, the stadium, and there's so many sort of talking points to emerge from it. Um, and the, the role of Kane, Jamie, Jamie Carragher writing in his Telegraph column today, saying that we lose 50% of what Kane brings you by just having him up there, or more or less as a battering ram. It does give space to all the, those many fine midfield players who want to operate in those areas he drops into. But Jamie was making the point that you feel you kind of neuter a lot of what he's good at. What do you make of that? Yeah, I think that the first half yesterday, by the way, Gareth, Analysis was spot on in terms of the energy. I mean, you saw Jude Bellingham's first half and he was everywhere. His heat map was everywhere. And the concern was that not only he, that of course had a Champions League final, long season with Real Madrid, week off probably, um, to allow him to rest and recuperate, is that his levels were not going to be the same in the second half. And that was that was very visible. As Jude Bellingham grew in the game and wanted the ball, it, it, he was dictating that, for me, took away a lot of Phil Foden's efficacy on the left. And I think I've got a solution for that. And it muted the effect of Harry Kane. If you remember against Iceland, the the, uh, the game before we came out to the Euros, I remember one time, I think, that Harry Kane actually picked the ball up five yards off, off one of our own defenders. And, of course, we've been used to seeing him do that over the years for club and for country. But with such a plethora of really good midfielders that can do the dropping off, Harry Kane doesn't need to do that. So we saw effectively Harry Kane as the centre-forward that was the centre-forward in the early Spurs days before he started to be the guy that dropped deeper and deeper and got involved in the game. Now, you either, if you're Harry Kane, you have the discipline of an Erling Haaland at Manchester City that also, I'm sure, would love to drop off, get touches of the ball. But as Super discipline, get in the box, wait for the cavalry to arrive, crosses in the box, creative midfield. Um, or you have to have a look at Harry Kane's position in the team. The latter position is never going to happen, quite simply because of his goals to gain ratio for England. So it's something for Gareth to look at. But overall, just uh, Steve Armisen, exactly the same, you know, as a professional sportsman, win the game, keep a clean sheet you're in pole position in the group. And that's where we really need to, to to focus on. It's group play. Every game isn't going to be crash, bang, wallop, threes, fours and fives. What's your solution for the Foden problem then? Because he, he didn't play well and we all know he's a great yes. player. I think that we've transitioned from 4-3-3 to 4-2-3-1. I would argue, and with the greatest respect to Denmark and Slovenia and even other countries, like if, if we're going to be bolder, then let's be bolder, but with a with a doffing our cap to, to what other teams have. Declan Rice was exceptional yesterday, sitting in front of the back four. I thought Mark Gay was, was my man of the match. He was very, very good, the Crystal Palace man. But I think Declan Rice is at the seniority now that he can play as one holding midfielder. You have four in front of him and you have real width. One of the things that we were really crying out for yesterday down the left was, was width. And Phil Foden wasn't that man. So if you play 4-1, four, 4-1, one, four, one, Kane is the one. Get in the box, Harry. Stay in the box, Harry. Is that Trent Alexander-Arnold can play on the right. We saw in the, the lead-up games. Exceptional when he moves on that right-hand side and can whip crosses in. A, a, a right midfielder, if, if you will, in the sort of Beckham mould, can really win crosses in, get forward, support players. You've got... Bellingham and Foden in central positions, they can also dovetail, getting back alongside Declan Rice if necessary, and a proper out-and-out -out left winger, whether that be Anthony Gordon, um, that would be probably in pole position, but also Cole Palmer, we know he's a left footer but plays on the right, but I think that that way we have width. We're not relying on Luke Shaw that might be injury prone in the in the coming games or Kieran Trippier. Carl Walker doesn't like to get us forward as much these days. The elephant in the room, Bakayo Saka, I'm sorry, he didn't play very well for England yesterday. He wasn't the only one, but he didn't play very well. 
So for me, it would be Declan Rice is the one holding midfielder, Trent on the right, Bellingham Foden, and a proper left-sided winger that can go past people and put crosses in the box for Harry Kane. Gareth won't do that, though. He well, definitely won't. I mean, you know him. Second. You've played with him. Do you, uh, he won't. What, what's the likelihood of that, Stan? He's a pragmatist, and uh, I don't think that means he's boring. Look, there are no coaches out there. I mean, I have this conversation so often when I was talking to England fans yesterday, and they're saying, we well, don't fancy him, Stan. He's boring. He, you know, he's, he's, he t- takes the shackles off players, and um, um, keeps the shackles on players. Hmm. I've never met a coach or a manager that does that. And if you listen to him, he'll say, we don't say anything any different to any other coach or manager. But I think the difference is it's how players respond to the manager that makes them play with that extra um, oomph, that extra little bit of quality, the flair. So then you start to see the Pep Guardiola's and Jurgen Klopp's, their personality starts to um, take place uh, amongst the players and amongst the team. And Gareth may not have that. Steve Holland may not have that. But he's trying, and he's really trying to put... Um, quality attacking players into the team. He's heard what the country said, but ultimately, you know, Phil Foden was responsible for Phil Foden's performance last night. Jude Bellingham, now, I know he's only 20 and a baby, but he's La Liga Player of the Year. Lots of maturity already. He would have known what his engine levels were in that first half, and he was running around like a banshee, and there was a massive drop-off in the second half. So maybe it's Harry Kane, maybe it's Carl Walker, maybe it's John Stones that just at half time says, look, calm down a little bit. First game, very emotional. We need you to play well over 90 minutes. So for me, I think that, that it's 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 as we were before we left for the tournament. Are the question marks there? Um, are we one of the favourites? Yes. Would I put us above France? Probably not at the moment. They are yet to, to have their bow. I watched two or three games before the tournament started. I saw uh, the Dutch Phillips Iceland three or four days after we played them. The Dutch looked very good. I watched Portugal beat Ireland very comfortably. Portugal are very good. Because we're in England or the UK and because the, the betting market concentrates on the domestic market, England are always up there. But we are in the conversation with probably realistically three or four or five other teams. Uh, one of the positives, though, was we were very worried about the defence. Gay's performance was, was yeah, uh, right. excellent. I know excellent. you were impressed. Um, I mean, they did get balls into the box. They didn't have people on the end of them, and better teams could punish us. But overall, uh, that seems a bit less of a concern than it was before the first game stem. Yeah, it was, because people would have looked at Gwaii and said, well, we've got, you know, and, and again, bandwagons amongst England fans are, are notorious. Um, and the Branthwaite omission was like, if England don't defend well, it was because Jared Branthwaite wasn't there. And I think that Gwaii came in, his ball distribution was very good, his composure was very good. You saw his movement whenever we had the ball in, in dangerous positions, playing it across the back four. He'd be the man that would sprint 15, 20 yards back to receive it in good time and space. When Serbia did have ball around the age of the 18 box, he was combative. His first two or three yards was very good in terms of closing down and getting players head over the ball. Um, a, a very, very good night's work. And like you say, that's a box ticked in terms of addressing some of the defensive issues with, of course, the omission of not only the likes of Branthwaite, but, of course, Harry Maguire, that's been a staple for England for some time. Yeah. Stan, great Stan, to talk to you. Well, catch great. up with your Friday all being well. Reflect on the yeah. Denmark game. Enjoy the week. Come and on, you. England. All the best. <laughs> Stan Connemore was in the stadium last yeah. night in Gelson Kirk. And that's an interesting view on Saka, isn't it? I haven't heard anybody else say that. That's no, I mean, the feeling was yeah, that he'd yeah. had... I mean, he, he did play well in the first half. He did, sure. yeah. He yeah. got him behind a couple of times, a couple of good runs. Uh, but that was quite bold from Stan, the chance of it happening. I think we're going to hear from a City fan later on who would like to see a whole lot more boldness in the England setup. But uh, we'll bring you that later. Um, we're going to be chatting to Shabana Hearn uh, very shortly in the Scotland camp, building up to their next game. She can't be as optimistic on, as she was the other on day. On Wednesday, well, you've got to keep the faith. <laughs> uh, Romania still 1-0 up against Ukraine. Um, a cracking goal. Uh, we'll bring you uh, an update at half-time from uh, Ollie Klink. But uh, for now, that was our look back at England-Serbia. Thanks to Carling. 18+, plus. please drink responsibly. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs. Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.